Welcome to Retrained Search, the podcast, where we lift the lid on what it's really like to work retained, discuss the stories we've gathered along the way, and give you all a peek behind the scenes of our amazing community and how they're getting ahead. Hello, Jordan. Hi, Lou. How are you? I'm very well. I've had a couple of days off, as you well know. So. Yeah, I do. I bloody do. <laughs> I'm ah. sorry. <laughs> Left you on your own. You've I hope done... you are uh, rested. Yeah, I'm so rested. Ready for one last push in 2023. I'm so rested. It was fabulous. Thank you very much for letting me have some time off. Um, and you're sitting up very straight today, Jordan. Yeah, I've been you know told off. Say? I've been told <laughs> off for slouching. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I've just realised... What? We're in the same hoodie for this podcast as the one on the last podcast. Oh, really? And I just want the listeners to know I do I do have more clothes. Um, <laughs> I've got, got two. Clothes, I've actually, got, I've got two hoodies. Actually, not one. No, I'm joking. I've got loads of hoodies, but it's just it's winter. It's getting really cold, and this is comfortably my warmest hoodie. Minus one. It is out here today. Yeah, our front door was frozen shut this morning. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the UK, right? Welcome um, to podcast episode number 11. I'm reliably informed. Time is flying, right? Can Isn't you believe it? we're at Christmas already? I know. And I remember when we first started filming the podcast, I'm in like a little vest. I can't imagine being wearing a vest at the moment. It's so bloody cold. Mm, mm. And it is nearly Christmas. You love Christmas, don't you, George? I can hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it. That sound that makes me sound like a Scrooge, but like, if you saw my house, our house, mine and my wife's house, and cheers, at the moment, it is like a grotto. Oh, is the only way I can describe it. No, it's not. It's not, Lou. It's not. We've got uh, three Christmas trees. Every Christmas tree, we've got one Christmas tree decorated with these little teddies. Sounds weird. Um, like Christmas teddies, like there's a a, a, a Christmas belly dancer. Um, yeah, oh yeah, there's there's all to, all sorts. The problem is the cats love the teddies, so then I spend every minute of every day chasing the cat around trying to get the teddies. Then I have to figure out where on the tree did the teddy come from because Becca will notice the gap if I don't put it in the right place. So I just said to Becca, "That's it. I'm done. I'm over it. They can destroy your tree." It's not my problem. Um, yeah, and I thought it had stopped. And then last night she was doing the Christmas table. That's a thing, apparently. That's a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I'm a bit sick of it. But first it's Christmas... Started. It's, it's, it's not even December yet, Jordan. You can't no, be sick of it I know, yet. I know. But it is the first Christmas with a baby, which is exciting. Oh, right? that is exciting. Mm, it is. exciting. You wait, you've got all the whole... Christmas Eve boxes to come. You've got the whole um, treats out for mm -hmm. Father Christmas and his reindeers and who obviously... Well, I was thinking, like, though, if 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 when she gets to, like, one and a half, two, yeah. I just tell her that he's not real. Jordan Taylor! Then, problem solved. you even say that? I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I wouldn't... He's not I wouldn't real. Dream of doing that. Jeez, I wouldn't dream of doing that. my bubble. Do you know, know? Um, so you know, but for our listeners, my wife is a primary school teacher and um, must have been two years ago now. She came home from school in December one day and like, I could tell she'd had an absolute shitter of a day. She was like, she looked drained. And I was like, you okay, what's happened? And she said, the complaints we've had from parents today. And I said, oh, why? What's happened? And I can't remember the woman's name, but she was like, oh. Mary, the other teacher. Now, Mary is like the old school teacher, and all of them been there 30 years, close to retiring. Um, had enough with the kids. I just said he's not even real. No. Honestly, true story. No. True story. So all these kids have gone home in floods of tears to the parents saying, Mrs. Whatever told me Father Christmas isn't real. And but it was like, like high school kids, primary school children. It was like she, I think she's like a year five, year six teacher. So they must, I don't know what's that make them like eight, nine, ten. Oh. 
it was like World War Three in that school for the next week with all the yeah. parents calling up. Yeah, I know. I know. So well, Mary, though, she must have had a very bad day. Mm. Deserves a right though. Screws like the Grinch. You sounded like that. Yeah, I was joking. I mean, that's one way for early retirement, isn't it? If you're Mary. Yeah, it is, especially being called Mary as well. It's not a good time of year not to be, uh, you know, embracing the joys. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> good, good point. She should have just retired back to a stable and <laughs> been, been on her own with her own thoughts rather than ruining everyone else's Christmas. Mary. We have got some good news to share, though, haven't we, as usual? We have. We have, yeah. Um, <laughs> we had a lovely, lovely email, didn't we? Just while I was away, was it yesterday? It was. Yeah, I'd um, I spent a couple of hours with some members of ours the other night on a coaching call, and they had a pitch lined up with a customer of theirs, and they've been putting in so much work, so much time. They are so good, by the way. Like I find, I was saying to Lou before, I find it so infectious when when our members do that and they put in the time and effort. Just because I remember the hours that I spent practicing my pitch with Lou and driving four hours to meetings, just going over and over the pitch, saying it again and again and again. It kind of takes me back to when I was doing it. Um, and it seems like it went pretty well, right, Lou? Yeah, I, I agree. They have been putting the work in. I saw them on um, for their pitch coaching and oh, I loved it. I got a tear in my eye watching them pitch. They were so good. And they were yeah. like, Spit. and I was like, I'm serious. You're so good. I said, you just need to bloody get out there and do it. And they've split it up between them, haven't they? It's so nice. Yeah, really good. Yeah. Post pitch selfie, they said. We slayed. Can you see that? Can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So they said, post pitch selfie. We slayed, as one of them said. Two of the three people that we pitched the retainer to, they actually ended up pitching it to the third person for them. Um, yeah, that's how you know you've done a sterling job. So big well done to those guys. Such a big well done. And there's a really nice photo of them both, like big beaming grins. Yeah, it is. Yeah, they did slay. I mean, I, they were they were slain before they even um before they even went out to do that. Um this is one of your mastermind members, right, Lou? This is one of my mastermind members, yeah. He um is embracing um one of the things that we do in the mastermind is maximize on the sales opportunities from the actual search itself and one of those is uh, getting really good powerful testimonials and the best way of doing that is by video and uh, he says hey folks uh, we've just had our first client video testimonial come through bloody exciting stuff hmm. then he sort of in the background he says we've also got retainer number 10 agreed and a promising sounding meeting for thursday morning to discuss number 11 being confirmed mm. so and um, then then he says back to the video testimonial does anyone know of an easy to use video editing software or b someone can polish the video we used video ask to process everything thanks in advance well of course we do um so we did i love um, nick's comment underneath <laughs> Yeah, Nick then jumps in. Um, so I just included that on the snip. Um, I don't know about videos, but well done on the 10 retainers. So that was really nice, really yeah. super. I, I, I remember that, remember when we first spoke to him. And it really wasn't that long ago, right? No, no, I remember no. the conversation and him saying, it would just help me so much if we had some consistent revenue, if we could just win a retainer. Um yeah, how far he's how far he's come in such a short space of time. And yeah, then, this is slightly yeah. different. I mean, this is um, Lucy, one of our one of our members. Um, just wanted to share some positive news that I've potentially got three new retainers through two new clients off the back of the last case study email that I sent out. Still needs to do the pitch, but I've seen a pitch that won't be a problem. So we'll see if I win them. But at least it's opened some great doors. All three are senior level VP, director level searches. Thanks to Lou and Jordan for all your help so far. It is our absolute pleasure. It really is. Um, and actually, I was just chatting to Lucy on the collab call this morning, and um, she used the case study template that we give we give you all 
uh, in the program and she mm-hmm. sent it to someone on Fiverr just to put her words and format it in her format and that's what it was that um has got her leads of some really tasty projects so really yeah, well nice. done Lucy really really nice, nice. application mm. uh and then um moving on we've been helping people as always uh all the time every day all day always we? changing yeah. lives changing lives yeah that's it that is it that is actually mm. it what um have you been helping? So I say that to Becca all the time. She's got a busy yeah. day. Always. Life's a change. Yeah. Life's a change. Yeah, life's to change. I'm always busy. That's what we do. Oh, lives to change. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. We could have that on the merch, couldn't we? Changing lives. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether we're going a bit far. <laughs> people, people will think we're like some <laughs> some like big charity or something like that. Yeah. But we do change lives, so maybe we, we should. We do. I think it's valid. I think it's valid. Put it this way. If they came to me with the objection, I could handle it. Yeah. If they said, do you really? I'd be comfortable having that conversation. I yeah. would be comfortable having that conversation too. Yeah. I think we should do it. Maybe a key ring to start with. Yeah, maybe. So I'm better if I seem a little tentative. It's because, it's because on my office chair, I found this screw oh. on the floor about an hour ago. Ooh. So I'm thinking at any point, if you just see me disappear... You go upside down. <laughs> if I just disappear <laughs> at some it. point... I'd like to get that on camera. It's because the screw was an important one. It was literally a screw missing. Yeah. What have you been helping people with, George? Do you know I'm going to... Lots of different things, but I'm going to follow on from... If you remember, in I think in the last podcast, we talked about having Gabby on from Teal Up Raccoons. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and how good that session was. We had Matt on last week as well, didn't we? Talking about Google X ray searching. I didn't see it. What was it like? Insane, really, really oh. good. I think I made a flippant comment after it. Um, excuse the bad language, but it was so true. I think I said like I thought I was quite good at Boolean searching, but it turns know. out it was absolutely shit. <laughs> like, so much I didn't know. Um, yeah. What, like, what, like, what did you learn that you didn't know? So, um, I thought you were pretty good at bullying and searching, yeah, stuff exactly. And but I thought I was limited to like LinkedIn. What he was showing us is that you can pretty much bully and search any website at all Facebook, LinkedIn, Zing. You can do one search through Google that searches all of those platforms at the same time. No, worries. some of the stuff that you can do, incredible, incredible. Now, I'm not saying that. If you find a thousand candidates on LinkedIn, you're going to find twenty thousand on Google X Ray search, but you might find an extra fifty or an extra hundred. And on those really difficult searches, that can be the difference, right? Like you only need one. And he's Matthew Mercer, isn't he? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Google X Ray searching. What's his company? So people can find him if they want to. Oh God, who you put me on the spot now? Sorry, George. Give me a second. I just want to make sure I get it right. Yeah. So his name is Matthew Mercer, and his company is Tech Talent Delivery. Talent Delivery, there you go. Yeah. 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 Insane. Really good. Really, really good. Um, I'm really highly recommended. Do you know what just really impresses me as well? When people present really well. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's because we we present as well. Like I've got a real mm. appreciation for how it's not that easy. Um, yeah, he was really impressive. Not people just make it look easy as well. People that make it look seamless is always really impressive, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But yeah, the delivery was great. But the content, wow, really good. By the way, and if anyone's listening here thinking about joining us, um, that session is recorded and it's in our community, and the feedback we've had on it is insane. Yeah, it's great. What about you? What have I been helping people with? Well, as you know, I've been off for a couple of days, so I haven't been helping people as much as I would normally be helping people. But I have been helping people with their pitches because it is a little bit slower for most people this week than it has been in the last few weeks, like we Mm -hmm. both said we've noticed it just slow down like almost people are stopping for christmas early 
Um, yeah. So yeah. everybody that I've spent time with is in BD mode and in business development mode, like winning, wanting to win their projects or at least have the seeds like planted and growing ready for next year, which is, which is brilliant. And so I've been helping people with um, uh, using different things as lead magnets and lead gen. And you've just seen the result. Yeah. Of, yeah Lucy. Uh, yeah. Result of that. Um, and other people doing the same thing and having similar results um, with other other lead generators like the compensation benefit study and uh, speculative um, uh, senior introductions. But then once you get them on the phone, how to actually convert that into a pitch. Um, and one of the things, one of the sort of misconceptions was that from the initial conversation, you need to then book a separate meeting to be able to pitch to them. Um, when actually you don't and just helping people move it seamlessly like really easily like yes I can absolutely help you with that you know I, I, I can understand you've been finding it frustrating you know don't worry you're not on your mm. own um, but we've been helping other people with that with that exact same challenge I'd like to show you how we've been doing it we yeah. I'll just send you my zoom link just jump in there and I'll just uh, spend a few minutes showing you how we've helped one of your competitors with exactly the same problem like how easily you can switch a phone call into like a Zoom meeting where you can then actually walk them through what you want yeah. to do and how you work yeah. and not have this big kind of, oh, I need to book in a separate meeting to have, you know, to have a pitch. Like it, it, it although it, I always think it's really difficult and I wish we could call it something different. I wish there was a different word for the pitch because it sounds so pitchy. Do you know what I mean? Well, well, I've talked about this with you before, right? About the whole, I don't like the idea of selling. I remember Dave yeah. Wolfson home, who we had on the podcast a few weeks ago, he said the word sell comes from a Latin word, which means to serve. Yeah. So, you know, I, but, but I, I, to I totally agree. Like, And if it's done properly, it isn't a pitch. It's just, no. it, we use a doctor analogy a lot, right? And I spoke to someone about this on a coaching call last week and said, if you think about it, when you go to the doctor and you, you don't feel well or whatever's up with you, and at the end of that 20 minutes, they give you a prescription or some medicine, do you feel like you're being sold to? No. No, right? You feel like I trust that person. I've gone to them and said, this is the problem I'm facing. This is what's up with me. And they've got no problem. I've done this many times. Don't worry. I've got you. This is how we fix it. There you go. Mm, yeah yeah and, yeah and that's it, it's it's the same isn't yeah, it I think. it is the same it is it's just you walking through but of course to solve a problem you need to get them to admit that what they've yeah. been doing hasn't been ideal in the first place mm -hmm. which of course is helpful because there are lots of people that yeah um, putting up with with um recruitment models or putting yeah. up with, with, You're with right. models you're right. But you do the, there is the expertise piece around the diagnostic, which means it isn't a pitch, mm. because it's just a, an explanation of of how we address that situation. Like, if only yeah. you could summarize that in a better like. And it. Yeah. Well, no, I know what you mean. Um, anyway. But I, just, I don't want to contradict what you've just said, and I'm not mm. contradicting. I'm just adding to it. But I also think there's a time and a place where you can break. Right, sometimes it's really impactful after that diagnostic to say, "Yeah, yeah." I just want to go away and just digest what you've told me. Like yeah. we work with our clients in different ways depending on the circumstance. And can I help you? Absolutely. Is there a solution? Absolutely. Yeah. But I want to make sure that what I recommend is the right solution for this problem. And yeah. I just want to go away and sleep on it. Have you got half an hour tomorrow where I can walk you through how we're going to fix this? Like, like you can, do, you can. The point I'm making is, you can do brave, both. It? You're brave to let them go. Yeah, it is, but it's. But when I've done it, and I don't do it all the time, like most of the time, I agree. I go straight from diagnostic into pitch. Yeah. But if they're rushed, um, yeah. another time when I do it is if they've been burnt before. If they're, if I can tell they're a little hesitant, I want them to think. Not think, but I want them to know that I'm considering this. Like I'm not rushing into it. All I want to do is help them solve the problem. Yeah. You know, and having that break is one yeah. what I found is it really, really sets you apart from ninety-nine percent of contingent recruiters that call them. Yeah. 
because that isn't what they do. They say, oh, great, uh, what's the job title? What's the salary? What's the location? I get you some CVs across. CVs this afternoon. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just so, it's such a different experience. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So I think you can do both, right? Yeah. Yes, agreed. But when um, you've got that pitch nailed down, they're the nuances that you can start to play around with. Yeah. That's for yeah, me, that's when it got that's when it got fun. When it was like, well, I wonder what what if I try this? How how does that land? Does it land differently? What if I bring a colleague in with me and we share the pitch? What if I just do it all myself? What if I close this way? What if I close that way? That's when it for me, that's when it gets fun. Once you've got that well articulated pitch nailed down, yeah. then it gets fun. And the other thing that I I found fun or the bit that I really enjoyed the most was like someone had come on the call this morning and was saying that um, they wanted to go up into the C-suite, but they're nervous about it. Like they want to do more senior work, even just with their existing clients, but they don't know how to, you know, they don't really know what happens at that level. And they're a bit scared and daunted by, yeah. you know, not being caught out or not knowing the answer to something or not knowing something they should know. And I was the same. I was exactly the same. Like, you know, you don't know what you don't know and you don't, you know, you definitely get imposter syndrome when you move up. Um, but what what I started to realize was that it's just all about starting with the diagnostic and starting with questions. And through that, you learn, like, even if you don't, your intention isn't to pitch a solution um, for the first few times, if it's a new area for you, it's just a, a fact find. It's just a, a start to research gather about like, by the way, like, how do you find hiring at this level? Like, what's it like? What, you know, what, 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 work, what works for you and what doesn't work for you? And do you get what you need when you need it? And, you know, is it easy? Mm -hmm. Even yeah. and without any pressure of knowing that you're going to sell anything, just literally like finding out. Because yeah. when you start to ask those questions, you find that they've got similar problems, but just at a different level. And actually yeah, it's not absolutely. frightening. It's not that frightening. And just because these firms are, you know, bigger or, you know, they wear more expensive suits and they've got more expensive houses and it doesn't mean they're doing anything that mm. is, is, is beyond your capabilities. Yeah. And actually a lot of what we do at levels lower down it's really beneficial to the stuff that yeah. is higher up and, and, and yeah. often is lost as people get more senior. So I, I was just helping a few people like overcome that and just go in curious, just go curious. Don't go, I'm going to sell. Don't go, I'm going to get caught out. Just go in curious and, and open. Yeah. To yeah. Well, I, I say that often in the coaching calls, people fall into the trap and they'll say things to me like, um, I've got a customer who's told me they've got they've got a need. Um, so I've got a retained pitch on Wednesday. And I go, how do you know? They go, what do you mean? Well, how do you know it's a retained pitch? Mm -hmm. Like you've not you've not been through the diagnostic yet, right? And my biggest worry with that is if you go in with that mindset, I guarantee you subconsciously, you won't even realize you're doing it, but the questions you ask will be leading. Yeah. You'll be leading them to the point of, yeah, okay, this right. is right for retained. Whereas actually, if you go, and I think this is something you taught me, maybe Lou, like when I first did the course, I used to, at the start of every one of those diagnostic conversations, I used to find them quite awkward at the start. I feel like I'd be asking these big questions and the customer would be looking at me thinking, why is he asking me this? I don't normally get asked this type of stuff. So at the start, I would say we work with our clients in different ways, depending on the circumstance. Can we help you? Yes, absolutely. But first, I need to understand a little bit more about the challenge, what you're trying to achieve, what's been done so far, so I can make sure I recommend the right solution. Yeah, I'm going to need to ask some pretty deep questions, and it's probably going to take half an hour. Have you got that time now? Yeah. And if I did that, I could so be nice. totally impartial. I could ask the right questions. They're giving the time, the space, and then... Listen, nine times out of ten, it'd end up leading to a retained pitch because we yeah. all know it's better, right? It's like it's a solution normally. Um, but going in impartial and asking open questions is comfortably for me the best way. I'm a little disappointed because when you said a second ago, um, one thing that I used to find really fun, I thought you were gonna say was coaching you, George, but yeah, coaching you ofs. But I like the diagnostic because I like it when you just you sit back, you ask the questions, and you're like, "Oh right, there's that again. There's that problem again. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's that again." And yeah. you're like, 
there's nothing to be frightened of here. Like all no. of a sudden you kind of, your worries and your anxiety just melt away because you think these are problems I can solve. Yeah, and even if they've got a more expensive suit than you, win that first retained project, I think you can go and buy a really expensive suit as well. You can buy a more expensive suit than them. You can buy more expensive everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. absolutely. You and I know, as you and I know. I, rem- I remember coming out of my first ever retained pitch thinking, well, I better go and buy a Mont Blanc pen then, hadn't I? Yeah, you did, didn't you? Did your everyone dad else had a Mont Blanc and I was dad, there with me by Rob. Did you rob your dad? Yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I had like a big biro and everyone else had Mont Blanc pens and nice little pads. So I thought I better fit in, hadn't I? So I went and bought one. Yeah, bought my dad's off him. Yeah. Oh, and now you're the real deal. Uh, something like that. We try our best. We change lives. We change lives. We do change lives. Hum- humble as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, um, well, and we were going to finish with a little minute on mindset, weren't we? That's what we normally do. Yeah, well, it's been an exciting time for us the past couple of weeks because we've just had so many people. We talked, we, we talk, didn't we, on the last podcast about the Black Friday discount? I think we might um, have hinted at it. Um, Jesus, it's been a crazy couple of weeks. Lou Lou really considers and picks her times to go off on a few day breaks. Um, <laughs> it's been a crazy couple of weeks, but we have had so many new members join us. It's so exciting. And one of the things that's been a real common theme is that they all see this as the perfect time to join us. Because things start to slow around Christmas and New Year, they feel they've got the space, the time to really invest time in this and to make a change heading into the New Year. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, I agree totally. What people say to me sometimes is, like, do we need to be actually doing it, you know, because mm. I'm not going to be, you know, like making calls necessarily over Christmas and stuff like that. Um, and it's the same as I say in, you know, any time when you've got a bit of headspace, it's much better. And this is only from people that have done done the training and they, and they tell other people, because I see when people put it in the community, like, what's the best way to do this course? You know, I know it, it gets results, but like, what's the best way? Um, and they say like, watch it all the way through first and just let it like wash over you first and then like start putting it in to. Yeah. Well, well, I I obviously did the course with you kind of many years ago. And then I remember the first, when I first joined, we trained full time. I thought, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of watch the course back from start to finish again. And there were so many bits in that thought. I didn't hear that first time around. No way. Yeah. yeah. So, so absolutely. So, like, I've said the same thing to people that have joined us over the past couple of weeks. Like, over Christmas, spend time with your families, rest, recharge, get ready to go again next year. Just sit down with the cup of tea, hot chocolate, coffee, whiskey, whatever you want to do over Christmas, and just yeah, let it wash over you. Just listen, listen to the language that we use, listen to how we frame things. And then I guarantee you when you listen to it again in the new year and you really make a start with it, you'll hear different things. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So mm. that that's what we wanted to leave you with really. And that is that if you're kind of hanging around thinking you're watching our stuff and you're listening to us talk and thinking, God, I want to be one of those people that's going, ah, I've just won my first retainer or, oh my God, I'm on number 10 or, oh my God, this has totally changed me. Or I'm rocking gone. around in a five grand suit. <laughs> yeah. That as well. <laughs> Then, like, the offer that we've got at the moment, which, depending on when you're listening to this, may not still be on because it's our Black Friday offer, um, is only open for a really limited time, but it is the best offer that we've ever done. Mm. And all you need to do is, what, book some time with us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so there's a link like below to the side above. I don't know where, <laughs> somewhere. But listen, if, if you can't find the link below to the side, to the ball diagonally behind it, wherever it is, um, you can find a link to book some time on our website. On the website, yeah. Just book some yeah. time in and we'll tell you about it. And we want you to be one of those people going, oh my God, this is awesome. Should have done it ages ago, which is what most people say. 
So now's a good time. That's what we're saying. That's that's what we're leaving we, you with this week. Absolutely. Um, happy Christmas, I think. Oh no, we're doing another one. Oh, no, we've got we we've got a special guest next week. Yes, we've we have got a special guest, guest next week. Ooh. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah, I'm excited for yeah, next week. Awesome. We're going to be like it's on be location great. somewhere as well, aren't we? We're going on to be location. Like on yes, location. We are. Yes, yes, we, we are. are. We're jet setting just north of London. Off. Kind of. Yeah, we can't go like too close to London because I'm a bit scared when we get, you know, too near the big city. But we are on location. So thank you very much to those of you listening. Thank you, everyone. Um, thank you, Jordan. Thanks, Lou, and as always. We'll see you in the next episode. See you then. Well, that's another episode of Retrain Search, the podcast in the bag. Thanks for listening to our wild tales, LinkedIn controversies, and our top tips on how to sell and deliver retained search. Get involved in our next episode. Send in your questions and share your experiences with us by emailing podcast at retrainsearch.com. And don't be shy. Connect with us on LinkedIn and come and say hi. We don't bite, unless you're a Shrek firm, that is. We want to say a special thank you to our retrained members for sharing what's working for them right now and innovating new ways to grow and evolve. It's an incredible community. If you're wondering what exactly we mean when we mention our communities, well, we have two separate programs. Our Search Foundations program is for recruiters who want to learn how to sell and deliver retained search solutions consistently. And we have our Search Mastery Programme. That's for business leaders or owners already at 50% retained or more and looking to scale and grow and structure their search firm. We cap memberships to these programmes to protect the integrity of the community. If you want access, just talk to us. Okay, thanks for listening. We'll be back very soon with another episode of Retrain Search, the podcast.